TLDR, if I needed kindling for a fire, I would use these books. Hello, my name is Ashley Hanna. This is The Moody Reader. And today we're gonna talk about the absolute worst books of this year. This is not up for debate. Uh, because these opinions are mine. That's the only disclaimer we're giving because I hate disclaimers. So if you stumbled upon this video and didn't realize it's gonna be a hate video, that's on you. First of all, let's talk about what gets a book the distinguished position of worst of the year. And that would be if I had a visceral reaction whilst reading it, AKA like a hateful one, as in rolling my eyes, or wanting to put it down, or hate reading, what's the last one? Or throwing it across, wanting to throw it across the room. Those are the only things that need to be in place for me to actively despise a book and put it on this list. And these are the ones that made the cut. And these books, all of these books got a two, if that. Two stars, don't need to read them, they're terrible. So for this first book, we're starting off real strong. I'm sure that there are some fans of this author's that will maybe come for me, I don't know. I don't know if I'm out there on the internet that much or enough for that to happen. But uh, the first book is, what's this called? House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J Maas, um, which also I did read the first book in this series this year as well. And that one was also trash. So, um, this book is about, uh, I have to think about the first book's plot. Give me a second. So the first book is about this girl named Bryce, who is this half breed person, uh, who lives in this magical city called Crescent City. And this city has, uh, lots of technology, like it's in like the new age time period. And that's part of why I hate this book with my entire heart and soul. And so one day, Miss Bryce Quinlan is out partying hard and then she realizes after coming back from this um, really wild and crazy night that uh, something has murdered her best friend and you know, all of her friends, their mutual friends, I guess. Um, and this first book is kind of like a mystery, I think. It's like a fantasy mystery hybrid. And the reason why I do not like this book so much is like I said, because it's just way too modern for the style that Sarah J Maas is best at writing in my opinion. Because as most people know, Sarah J Maas got popular writing the Throne of Glass series, which I also read and uh, back when I was a, a youth, it was, it was great. I loved it, it was entertaining. They were fast paced, fine. And they are set in more of like a medieval-ish, like just like in the past setting. And that works for me because Sarah J Maas's writing also relies heavily on like the, the jealous uh, males aspect. Like they say the word males so many times in this series as well. And there's mates and all that stuff. It's just very, uh, very much so cavemen, like Neanderthal uh, type relationships, I guess. So that's part of the reason why I didn't like this one because I don't think you can put modern with Neanderthal. It doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for me. And also the plot was just a little boring. I feel like Sarah J Maas's other plots were much more entertaining. And this one was kind of like, eh, like I got bored several times reading this several times and it also felt like it was a lot of uh, the worst aspects of Sarah J Maas's writing in her other books that I've read being like almost every single one of them uh, which is like your main female character is just like this uh, ultra powerful superior woman who can do everything she don't need no man so she's gonna have all the men and this happened in this book and it was just like the last straw for me. I could not, I could not. Bryce Quinlan is probably my least favorite of the, the heroines of Sarah's work. This was the worst world. Um, 
the ending of this the ending of this particular book felt like a little bit of a cop out like I can't spoil it but if you've most people I feel like a lot of people read this book but if the people who had a problem with it agree with me you'll agree with me and then maybe the worst part of this novel is the I know that there's gonna be smut in Sarah J Mass's work I know this it makes me uncomfortable but we still persevere I'm not one of those people who can just like skim through those scenes because I have a weird thing not a weird thing I have to read every single word if I don't I feel like I've missed something really important and I feel like in this book in particular there is no way you can skip a certain scene because it is a plot point so that's why I'm like I can't no 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 the mysteries the I don't know it's just it didn't work for me that's all I gotta say didn't work and we'll definitely not be reading the next book. Um, I really only read these two books because uh, it was really hyped and I wanted to, I wanted to hate read it. That's on me. The next book I don't have because I unhauled it because it was just so boring. Fell asleep while I was reading it. It was that bad. And it is Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. Uh, this one was another really hyped book that I thought I would like because I thought it was gonna be a fan I thought it was gonna be fun and fantasy and it was none of those things. This was milk toast characters who are carbon copies of interesting fantasy characters. We'll talk about it. So this is about uh, this world where uh, it is just common knowledge that all sorcerers are evil. I'm not particularly sure why we have a grudge against these sorcerers. Pretty sure it was said somewhere in the book, but it's been a long time since I read it and it was boring, so I didn't care. But uh, there's this woman named Elizabeth and she is this orphan Annie uh, who has been left to this library and her life's goal is to become like this warden and work for this library and protect the books. But these books also come to life and are magic but then they can become evil at some points and that's supposed to be scary, I think. Uh, yes, I am reading a synopsis because it was so boring. Um, and basically what happens after this is that this um, head warden ends up getting murdered and somebody sees Elizabeth on the scene of the crime, at the scene of the crime, and they accuse her of murdering her. And uh, then she has this um, sorcerer, like basically, come to her rescue and help clear her name, I think. The problem with this book is that there are so many different things that happened, but then nothing happened. But then at the end, everything happened. And, uh, okay, so let's talk about a couple of the characters. Nathaniel, boring, basic, is a Will Herondale carbon copy. This is known. Like he has this troubled past with demons, uh, magician, um, tall, dark, and handsome, you get the drill. I did enjoy his demon sidekick, but that was about it, about him. They just, I, they, there were no characters that had actual personalities that I would want to read about. And then the writing that Margaret Rogerson shows us, it's like, it's very flowery with no point. Like I enjoy pretty prose, but there was none here. Like it was just, a lot of descriptions and I was like okay does this does this page have a point and then it usually didn't and don't get me started on the fact that there was almost no magic in this book I this is a fantasy novel I'm assuming uh, whenever there would be magic done even by Nathaniel it was like okay we're just looking at him doing magic and nothing was explained I get that that's not the perspective that we were in but still, I would have loved some explanation and why the world was what it was. And also, I, I think this is supposed to be an enemies to lovers kind of a situation, a dealio, and they weren't really enemies. It was more like wrong side of the tracks romance, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah, I was just really underwhelmed by this book, really underwhelmed. Ooh, the next book that I'm gonna roast is The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. Now, 
I have read In My Dreams I Hold a Knife, which like popped off last year. It was great, lovely novel, um, kept me entertained. I like novels that are set in college atmosphere, so that one was a no-brainer. And this one was just very interesting. So this one is about Shay something or other. Let's check her last name. Shay Evans. And she is this bored out of her mind, complacent housewife who is just, you know, sunning on her. Like she's a rich housewife, let it be known. And that's kind of one of her problems, I guess, her money, I don't know. Anyways, we're getting too far ahead. She is this rich housewife who is just, you know, living her daily life when she is listening to this podcast run by a high school friend of hers. And as she's listening to it, he mentions uh, a friend of hers in college that she hasn't spoken to in years. And um, men he mentions that she has uh, recently passed away and he doesn't think that it's in the way that is being portrayed in the media. And so he like literally puts out in the podcast, Shay Evans, if you're listening to this, give me a call. And so then that kind of snowballs her into getting into this mystery of why her friend uh, has died. And this one is very much so a book about sex cults and has lots of trigger warnings abound uh, and it's just really bad. And here's why. So this book could have been okay if the main character wasn't the biggest fool in all of America. It is said many times in this novel that our main character is super smart. She was the valedictorian of her high school and that's just supposed to be like in the background of our minds. She is smart. But then there'll be moments in this book where our main character, Shay, is trying to infiltrate like a sex cult. And then she stands there like confused when she's undercover in this, this place and she's shocked when they want her to participate. She's like, who, me? I have to do this too? It's like, okay, come on. And she did so many things that it was like, okay, there was there were several other ways to get the job done than what you did right there. And so it just felt like the author, Ashley Winstead, was just telling us instead of showing us because she showed me that Shay Evans was a dummy. And then there were also a lot of heavy handed themes in this novel. Um, I understood what the assignment was on this, like the book, but uh, it was, it just was a lot. It was like, the themes were marriage equals bad, um, housewifery equals bad, men equals bad. And, and then I felt like it was supposed to, this book was supposed to drive home, um, like a theme of female empowerment and just the things that go on in this book are like the least empowering to women. I feel like you could possibly be. So it just, it was a very strong no from me. Again, I hate read this book all the way through. It was enthralling, but in the worst possible way. Like at least it kept me entertained, but I, I, I it was cringing and rolling my eyes. And like some of the things that happen in this book are just really like, it leaves a really bad taste in your mouth and you wanna like scrub your eyes and wash your mouth out with soap, it's bad. And also, like the original cult that's in this novel when Shay is um, a youngin, because this story is told in the two timelines where she's older and she's searching for her friend's killer and she's younger and she's like in this cult. Uh, I was, I don't, I've never been in a cult, but I feel like for someone to win you over to be in a cult, they have to give you more than a couple dinners. And then, cause it felt like the, main character was won over by, like I said, a couple dinners and it was like, bam, let me be your slave. So that was just really unsettling. Just none of the motivations for the characters made a lick of sense. And I felt really bad for Shay Evans' husband. He was done really dirty. Okay, the next book we're going to talk about is Hail Mary by Andy Weir, AKA, a math workbook. So this book is about Ryland Grace, who is 
uh, this man who has woken up on a spaceship and he uh, has some crew members who have passed away so he has no one to talk to and he's just trying to figure out what he's doing there and what he's supposed to do going further. And this book kind of goes between uh, two timelines, the one where he wakes up on the spaceship and the other where he, we're going uh, through his past and seeing what led up to him, you know, being on the spaceship because he finds that he's not very qualified to do anything, um, but he is this super smart, um, I think he is a science teacher? That sounds kind of right. And this book reminds me of that movie Passengers uh, that had Chris Pratt and Jennifer Lawrence in it that, okay, I feel like people didn't like that movie, but I actually liked it. It was pretty good. Um, the problem with this book is that he is the only one on the spaceship and uh, he is not very in interesting to me. He's not very entertaining. I don't love his personality. Um, he's just like this quirky science teacher and that's basically his entire personality. And this book, I should have known, again, this is a me problem, because I DNF'd The Martian because it was, there was too much botany and science. Uh, so I don't know why I went into this one thinking that it would be different. Um, I enjoy the space aspect. I enjoyed um, the problem solving that he had to do, but there was just not enough interaction with other people, obviously. And then when we do have interaction later on in the book, it's not the right kind for me. And it's just, it was just really boring. Um, just a snooze fest. Uh, people, again, I think this one got a lot of hype when it came out and people were like, oh, I just loved it. And I was like, where, where's the love? Just a little boring. And the epilogue made me a little sad for Ryland, if I'm being quite honest. The epilogue was not my cup of tea. And the last book we're gonna talk about is one that I finished recently and it is the Maid by, uh, this is by Nita Prose. This book is the least mysterious mystery book I think I've ever read. Um, I don't know why this book won a Goodreads Choice Award for mystery. That one is a mystery to me. That's the world's biggest mystery. Um, if you look on the back, it even says, um, it says, Claire Pooley says, a heroine as lovable and quirky as Eleanor Oliphant. I read Oliver, Oliver. I read Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. Hated that book, um, but not for the reasons you might be thinking. Um, and then it says, someone else says, oh, and then she continues on saying, caught up in a crime worthy of Agatha Christie. I loved it. I think Agatha Christie would is rolling in her grave being compared to this. This book is about Molly Gray, who is a 25 year old maid in the Regency Grand Hotel. And she has just lost her grandmother, uh, never had any real contact with her mother or her father. So she's essentially orphaned now, but she's okay because she has her daily routines um, and she's a little socially awkward and a little special as it keeps being said in this novel. Um, obviously special is code for autistic. So Molly Gray is, um, on the spectrum and for whatever reason that gives everybody else license in this novel to just pile on Molly and it's just really sad to see it. I just can't, I couldn't watch her get like beaten down verbally uh, as much as she did in this novel. It was quite depressing. There were like two likable characters in this novel, um, but I digress. So. Molly is working in the hotel one day and finds in one of the rooms she cleans um, the body of Mr. Black, the infamous um, like tycoon type character. And everything's fine, but then she gets accused of his murder. And so then that's where the story kind of kicks off and you're trying to figure out who killed Mr. Black. Um, like I said, this book is not very mysterious. Uh, it has, there is a mystery of course, but the vibe is all wrong in this one. This one feels more like a uh, literary fiction novel. And this one also is written 
kind of like a contradiction just like The Last Housewife was for me because it's said several times in this novel that Molly's super bright but then everybody treats her like she's dumb as a sack of rocks and that happens also with Juan, Juan Manuel. Um, he is a uh, dishwasher who is from Mexico and so obviously he um, is bilingual and I feel like the author wanted it to be um, represented that he speaks broken English but then she doesn't write any of his dialogue in broken English and so it doesn't make sense the way certain other characters interpret Juan Manuel uh, in saying that he's stupid because obviously there's nothing there to show me that he's stupid or that Molly was stupid. Um, there's a lot of bullying. Um, it's, and I also feel like it's not a long enough novel to do all the things that Nita Prose wanted to do in this one. I feel like we went a lot of places, like, um, like background wise with characters, like Molly's whole situation with her gran and her situation with her mother and, uh, Mr. Black and his two wives and their family. There was a lot that happened and we didn't get, well, I didn't get the depth that I wanted to in this novel. And then there's also a character in this one that um, you're supposed to feel sorry for and I just really could not care less. I couldn't. Um, they were self-centered and that was basically their only personality trait. But if you like lukewarm mystery, with a sprinkle of euthanasia, this one's for you. So those are the books that I enjoyed the least this year. Let me know if any of those books were on your worst list. And if they were somehow your favorite book, let me know, because I want to know why you like it. I'm curious. Thanks for watching me rant, rave, and ramble. Um, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and I will talk to you guys again next time, hopefully with my best books of the year because that one will be a little more chipper and happy and won't cause me so much um, depression. So thanks for watching, bye.